All right, this is Mercedes Diesel Guy, and I uh, actually had to take this video all over again because it didn't record the audio, which is probably a good thing because I was rambling on for a good 12 minutes, which I tend to do, as you're going to see in some of my videos. So I'm going to try to make this quick. This is, a, uh, this is an intro here. Uh, it's a 1981 Mercedes 240 Diesel. Bought the car in January 2008, had it until April of 2009. This is documenting mostly body repairs that I did. I'm not a professional body man, I just uh, wanted to make the car solid and safe again. And what I, uh, I bought the car not realizing how bad the floors and rockers were, so uh, eventually after I had the car tuned, after I tuned the car up, I uh, realized that the there were some pretty severe problems in the floor so rather than sell the car or junk it I uh, chopped out the rust, uh, took it back uh, to bare metal where it had rusted out and then actually got some sheet steel and uh, made patch panels and I affixed them with uh, steel pop rivets. I, uh, at the time I did not yet have a welder uh, which I have now, but it's not a very good one, so usually when I do these kind of repairs I still use pop rivets. Uh, this was all on the floor, so uh, the uh, repairs were pretty well concealed, and once it was all done, it was, uh, I, you know, primed, painted, undercoated everything, seam sealed, the whole nine yards, and I ended up driving the car for another year uh, through a uh, salty Massachusetts northeastern winter and uh, it stayed perfectly solid. No, None of the rust came back there, so I'm pretty confident that the uh, repairs were of reasonably good quality for what it was, and I didn't spend a lot of money to do it. Uh, not, I'm not uh, posting the vi these videos to uh, uh, and claiming that this is a concourse quality restoration or professional quality work. I mean, professional quality work uh, would uh, you know, require probably thousands of dollars and, uh, you know, factory stamped panels, uh, none of which I really, were really an option for me, so I just wanted to make the car as solid and safe as I could. I didn't want to use fiberglass because I would not uh, trust, trust it for a structural rigidity uh, where the repairs needed to be done. And uh, you know, I, I got the car done and uh, drove it uh, for a month or two as is. And then I did a vegetable oil conversion using a greasecar.com kit. And uh, I don't have any video documenting that. Uh, uh, but I can tell you this, the car ran perfectly on the vegetable oil but I just really could not find enough of it to make it economically worthwhile for me. So I ended up selling the car. I didn't make a penny on it, but I got all my money back, so including the conversion kit. So in the end, I was uh, pretty happy with it. If I had not spent the money on the vegetable oil conversion, I would very likely still be driving this Mercedes today. I just, uh, at the time I was so far into the car, just had to uh, cash it out. But if I hadn't spent that money, yeah, I'd probably still be driving the car today. As far as I know, the car is still up in New Hampshire, uh, driving around probably on vegetable oil. So uh, I really do consider this project a success just f uh, for somebody who was working on their own car. And uh, not too much to add to that. I'm kind of freeforming this video. I didn't uh, didn't script it out or anything, so. I uh, hope you enjoyed this series of videos, and uh, once I have these all posted, I'm going to post some uh, more videos documenting repairs to my old Subaru, and then uh, the next series, which is actually ongoing, documenting repairs to my 72 Mercedes 220 diesel. Uh, I've had that car since uh, March of 2010, and I'm still working on it. it I'm aiming to get that car back on the road for its 40th anniversary in 2012. So, hope you enjoy.